Hi, this is Tawana Freeman with the Black Life Coaches Network, and I am so glad that you can join us again today. Joining me for our coaches discussion is Nick Dillon, and he is an author, um, inspirational speaker, and a corporate trainer. Um, he does organizational development and organizational consulting. So, Nick, welcome to Black Life Coaches Network. Thank you. Thank you. Happy to be here. So, Nick, you know, the frame of reference, that is, you know, it's a unique way of um, kind of setting the tone for personal development, but can you give us a little bit more about what it means to get a frame of reference? The, the concept came from, it's interesting because the concept came from me teaching, I teach an introduction to communication class at Marquette University here in Milwaukee, and one of the chapters speaks about, in terms of communication, it kind of talks about just understanding the frame of reference from each individual when you're communicating. And so what I did was I took that concept and I dug a little deeper in terms of just really understanding myself. Mm -hmm. And because I do a lot of uh, mentoring and um, coaching in the community and I do some work with the Department of Corrections, I took this concept of frame of reference. And I'm always a big person on anything that I do talk about and even write about is using myself as the guinea pig first to kind of really, you know, make sure that it works first on me. Right. And so what I did was I, um, I took the concept, frame of reference, and I defined it as really understanding an individual. Mm -hmm. And when you're communicating or dealing with an individual, you really have to understand their frame of reference as well as your own. Mm -hmm. And so I'm real big on, I do a lot of um, corporate training, as you mentioned, and when I'm doing the training, I always try to bring this concept in is because when it comes to communicating, when it comes to understanding someone, you must first really understand where they're coming from. Mm -hmm. And as I move down into mentoring and really coaching an individual to certainly bring out the best in them, I found that beyond just understanding the frame of reference, we really need to dig deeper and find out, does that person really understand who they are? Mm. And that brought about the topic of the book and um, the different sections in the book that make up an individual's frame of reference. You yeah. mentioned a book. So you have a book that is scheduled to come out, or is it already on the shelf? book is scheduled to come out this spring. Okay. And it'll be in a, it'll be in an electronic format as well as a workbook will be attached to it. Uh, and the title of the book is Do You Know Who You Are? Okay. And there's seven concepts to finding your frame of reference. Okay. So give us a little bit about the seven concepts and, and if we need support as we do go through that process of um, identifying ourselves. The concepts come from, from the frame of reference. I devised the concepts, and in each chapter of the book, which is small chapters, uh, there's assessments at the end of each chapter because the book really guides the reader down the path of finding who they are, understanding themselves and understanding their frame of reference. I use the acronym BELIEVE, B-E-L-I-E-V-E. -E and the B in the word believe is stands for behavior. What drives our overall behavior? Why do we do what we do? Why do we say what we say? Why do we live the way we live? Why do we feel the way we feel? And then I go down in each other letter. The E stands for emotions and feelings. Mm -hmm. The L stands for our life experience that play a role. The I is our image of ourself. The E is the extended family and support that we have. The V is for values. And then we wrap up with another E for environment. Mm -hmm. And each one of those areas, if we sit down and conceptualize our upbringing, our support, our experiences, and all of those things that come into play, then we actually understand who we are. And I really delve into this because I do a lot of uh, mentoring with the Department of Corrections. And I do a lot of work with young men. And when I'm mentoring and I'm coaching them and I have a lot of discussions about 
why is your behavior the way it is? Right. And you would be surprised that so many of us don't know. Right. We, we can't conceptualize it. What this does is this breaks each area down so we really understand. And if we understand our frame of reference, and maybe it's not the way we want it to be, the choice from a support services standpoint is, is that you can change that. Right. Now, when you talk about our, you know, what we believe in or our belief structures, a lot of that is connected to our values. But we don't necessarily know what our values are. So one of the key questions that you have identified, even in the word believe, um, is being able to say, what is it that I actually value in life? Because once you connect with your true value structure, whether it's trust, whether it's friendships, I mean, whatever, loyalty, um, when you identify your values, that kind of sets a, a, a very nice frame, as you say, in a frame of reference. It does set a frame so you better understand how you function. Because even if you are um, developing, you choose friends, Basically, either according to your value structure or opposing your value structure. But you won't know that if you don't connect with what you are truly valuing in life. I agree. I agree. Values comes into play because it's those values and beliefs that really what define you when no one's watching. Oh, yeah. And what I always tell uh, my clients as well as even when I'm doing some speaking engagements is that Values, as you've stated, are, are, are what makes up us in terms of maybe it was grandma, maybe it was our parents, maybe it was our environment. Right. And as we've now entered into adulthood, we have our own set of moral, ethical values and beliefs, whether those are positive to someone or negative. I may not like the values that I've acquired. I may not like what I've come to be. My values may be 100% traumatic. Right. And that's when, as a coach, I like the idea that I'm able to take off that hat and put on my counseling hat. And that may be where I have to sit down and work with someone who says, you know what, I don't like the values that I've cultivated. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I, this works a lot when you're working with individuals that are just out of the correctional institution. Right. you got some values that we got to shake up a little bit. We've got to redefine those things for you so that you can reshape that going forward in life. So, yeah, yeah, I, yeah that, that's interesting because, you know, um, from uh, from the perspective of knowing that you may not you may not have the right value structures coming from that perspective. How difficult is it to coach someone through a, a value reassessment, let's say? Because if I have a set of values that are working against me, it's going to take a whole lot of um, reorganizing thoughts, a lot of emotional transition. It's going to take some time for me to start seeing the positive value versus the negative value. How, how long does it take someone typically to kind of understand that they need to reframe those values? Well, let me start by answering that, as with, with any coaching and even counseling, the first part of that is, is depends on the individual right. and that individual's desire for change. That individual has to recognize that how their value system and structure has worked historically either is working for them or it's not. And my direction that I take anyone in counseling or coaching is I need them to own that. I need them to identify that for themselves so then I can work with them in a direction that they need to go. Um, and, and typically it can take anywhere from, I would say, three to six months right. to really work on thinking. And that's when you bring a little bit of cognitive behavior counseling right. involved. Right. And then the coaching is there. I'm there as their biggest fan, their biggest cheerleader. Right. And we chart and we plan those results along the way right. so that they can see their thinking is better. They can right. see their their thought process is better and their decisions become better, so on and so forth. Right, right. And in, in your um, practice, um, I'm sure you've had um, great success in being able to help someone transition um, from, you know, in that framework to, to better frame their own life so they can know who they are. Um, knowing knowing who you are, obviously, when you know better, you do better, because you mentioned the seven concepts. So can you give us a kind of like a, an example of how that flows? 
Uh, let, let me let me give you a great example. I have a um, a client, and let's just say I started with that client about two years ago today. And that client started out with a very low self image of themselves. Um, they lacked in terms of confidence, and their long term desires weren't great. They didn't see themselves outside of their current situation. Sure. Um, they had some. They had some okay upbringing. Some some trauma that happened in their childhood. And I had knew this individual maybe 25 years ago. We reconnected and kind of went down the road of let's get into some coaching. You got an individual from a mindset standpoint that told me all I really have is a high school diploma. I don't like school. I can't make it. My biggest aspiration is not that great. And I can't see myself beyond this moment. Mm -hmm. And what we did over the course of almost two years now is we changed his thinking. Sure. We changed. And what I do with my coaching is at the end of each coaching session, my clients get a key concept. I leave every client leaves at the end of the call, at the end of the meeting with something to work on. Sure. And we went through key concepts like um, self-image, like patience, like thinking, right. like focus, values, things of that nature. And we went through each one of the um, belief concepts all the way down to their current environment. And believe it or not, it's been two years now since our first conversation. And I'm I'm real big on remembering quoted statements that an individual says mm -hmm. when we start and then re-quoting them maybe a year later or two years later absolutely. just to show them the impact. Right. Absolutely. And he just recently, in December of 2011, graduated from college with a bachelor's degree in business. Fantastic. That is big for me. That is fantastic. That's a wonderful story. That's actually, you know, that's the type of example that we all, you know, enjoy hearing so that we can kind of get an idea of what it really takes. How much of a commitment does it really take? And when you're talking about a young man who basically has no vision for their future and then transitioning them to where they are actually now in a place where they have more opportunity than they probably ever, ever, ever expected. So that's wonderful. That's a wonderful example. So, you know, so we have both, both scenarios. We have a, a short transition obviously and you have a long-term transition but it's really how much time you want to invest in the process is how honest is you are with the process if you're going to submit yourself and you're going to be present in the moment and take every session and give it all you got you know as you're going through the transition the more present you are the more honest you are the the easier the transition and sometimes in some cases the faster the transition so that's very important that's right. information okay so your book is coming out in the spring that, you know, we, we would love to support you and uh, be a part of um, the Believe team so that we can learn that yes. the seven concepts and, of course, begin to um, – kind of, you know, transfer that learning because as a coach, I could see myself using those seven concepts. Is um, in, in the future, do you see yourself teaching the seven concepts um, in a trainer trainer aspect because your background is, you know, is in training and in, in, um, organizational development. So is there an opportunity where other coaches can learn the, the uh, seven concepts of belief? Yes, my, my whole goal with the, the book as well as um, long-term planning for it is to be able to not only do a train the trainer, but create take the book and create workshops with it. Okay. Um, whether, I'm, whether we do um, a workshop where we guide people through finding their frame of reference or certainly using it as an educational development piece for other coaches to be able to say, how can I use this in my practice? I use this book as the foundation for my practice. Mm -hmm. And I take, whether it's coaching or counseling, I take every client down this road so that they understand themselves. Right. And, and this breaks down barriers. And, and that's why it's so impacting for me. It has broke down barriers for me. And 
you, you, you have to be authentic with yourself. You have to yeah. be open. You have to be honest with yourself. And the first thing I tell every client is that I'm not giving you something that I didn't do myself. Right. This helped me to understand me. Right. And if I can get a client to understand themselves, whether good or bad, and then we plan and grow from there, then you have went great miles in the Absolutely. long run. It'll be an excellent opportunity. Absolutely. And, that you, and you're basically confirming what we've um, spoke when we spoke with other coaches. They all have basically reiterated the same thing. I often share my own story or my own transition with clients to help them get a better frame of reference for the person who's on the other side of the telephone or the coaching session. So it works. It's a very effective way of um, learning. And I would like to say you would love to see um, the seven concepts, you know, presented on the Black Life Coaches Network. I'm sure there are a number of coaches that would want to benefit from this learning. So when you are ready in the spring and your book is launched, let us know. We'll come back and we'll talk about some other concepts from the book. How can we reach you? Uh, my blog, which is uh, Nick the Coach at WordPress.com. Mm -hmm. And I do a free monthly motivational newsletter. Mm -hmm. uh, people can find that on Twitter. Or you can just text the word motivation to the number 42828. Okay. And text okay. the word motivation to the number 42828. Perfect. That's perfect. Well, you know, you are obviously using social media to at its best, so you are effectively making sure that <laughs> people can find you, and that's a good thing. Thank you for your time, and I look forward to talking to you again. Thank you so much for having me.